In this video, we're going to take a look at a legal problem called an order successor in BSD. So given the root of binary search tree and a node P in it, return the in order successor of that node in BSD. If the given node has no in order successor in the tree, return null. So the successor of a node P in, is the node with the smallest key greater than P dot val. Um, so you can see we're trying to find the uh, a node has a value uh, that is greater than p dot val, but it's the smallest key, right? Or the smallest has the smallest value, or uh, in this case, the smallest value that's greater than p dot val, right? So you can see we have an example like this where we have a binary search tree, and then in this case, p is one. We're trying to find one, right? So in this case, you can see um, the in order successor is a value that's greater than the current node's value, right? The target node's value. Um, in this case, but it's also the smallest, right? So in this case, we're returning node two. Uh, we cannot return node three because in this case, node three is actually not the in order successor. We want to find the smallest key that are greater than p dot out, right? So in this case, it will be node two. Um, and you can see we also have another example like this, where if p is six, right? In this case, um, the in order successor. In this case, there's not, right? Because six is like the largest value, so there's no value that are bigger than six, right? So you can see that in order successor, if we have a binary search tree, if we want to find the in order successor, is always at the um, the the target nodes dot right, and we're trying to search the left hand side, right? We always want to find the left hand side um, of the node, right? Um, so in this case, uh, what we have to do is we have to use pointers to traverse the tree, right? Uh, we can't really just like try to say this is the tree node, let's try to traverse the right side and find the smallest value, right? Because there could be a situation where we have no left subtree at all, right? And there, for solving this problem, we, can, we have a couple situations, right? One situation is where let's say P is four, right? Once we find the four, uh, we just traverse the smallest value in the left sub in the right subtree, right? In this case, the, the smallest value in the right subtree is no five, right? So that's pretty easy. But in this case, there could be also a situation where we have P, P is 12, right? In this case, P is 12. And in this case, if we want to try to traverse the right subtree, there is none because there's, uh, there's nothing in the right subtree, right? And there could also be a situation where P is equal to two, where in this case, the smallest value, right, is not in the right subtree at all, right, because the right subtree is null. Um, so therefore, the right, the smallest value for p is equal to two, right, that's greater than the current node's value, which is basically no four, right, because no four is actually bigger than two, and is the smallest key greater than p dot out, right. Um, so you can you can see that we can't just search on the right side of the the, the target node. What we have to do is we have to use pointers to keep track of the previous um, node that we just visited, right? So you can see here, um, if we are given this example, like what we have, what we can do is that we can use a current pointer which points to the current node, and the previous pointer points to the previous node. So in this case, if let's say um, we're at node two, right? So in this case, what we can do is that we can get current is equal to node seven. Right, so in this case, current is seven, previous null, right? So I'll just put in, and then in this case, we'll just continue. So in this case, we know that P is two, so we traverse the right, uh, left side, of course, right? Because two is smaller than seven. So in this case, we have current is four, and then the prev, in this case, is gonna be seven, right? That's the previous node. Okay, so sub four is still smaller than P, right? It's bigger than P, so we're just gonna continue to search on the left side. So now we have two, and then the previous basically four. And then we check to see if there is a right side, right? So now the current is gonna be right side, so we know that this is null. And then we realize this is null, so what we're gonna do is that we can break out of the loop, and then we can just return the, pre the, the node that the pre previous pointer is pointing to, right? Which is no four. So in this case, we can use a previous pointer, keep track of the previous node, right? So that in this case, if we end up getting a null value on the right side, in this case, the right subtree is null, we can just return the previous pointer. Okay, so that's basically one situation. And let's say we have 12, right? So in this case, 12 right here, we can do the same thing, 
in this case, we have current is equal to seven, pre is equal to null. So then we continue to search on the right because in this case, 12 is actually bigger than seven, right? So now we have 10. And then in this case, um, you can see here, pre should still point to null, right? Should still point to null. The reason why we should still get uh, pre point to null is because there could be a situation where um, where we don't have a, a, a uh, the smallest value, or in this case, a rise up tree, or in this case, a, uh, a node that's the uh, smallest value, right? So in this case, what we have to do is we get pre is continue point to null, and then we get current is equal to 10, and then 10 is small, still smaller than 12, so we just can continue to traverse the 12. So once we notice that we have 12, uh, what's gonna happen is that we're just gonna find the smallest value, right? So in this case, we continue to search on the right, right? In this case, we get n, right? In this case, we have current is equal to null. Um, let's say current is not null. Let's say we have another subtree like this. Let, let's say we have 11, right? So what's gonna happen? Uh, well, maybe not. Like, let's say we have 13. Let's say we have 14. And this is our 13 here, right? So what's gonna happen is uh, we're just gonna get current is set to 14, right? So we notice that 14, in this case, current is actually smaller. Uh, the current is actually bigger than the, the, the target node, which is 12, right? So what we can do is that we can get pre is equal to current node value. So we're gonna get pre is equal to 14. And then current is gonna move on to the next node, which is 13, right? And then in this case, we continue. Then we have the current is equal to null, right? And then pre is equal to 13. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna use the previous pointer when we try to traverse the left side, right? If we're traversing the left side, we can use the previous pointer. If we're if we're traversing on the right side, we don't have to change the previous pointer at all, right? Because there could be a situation where we don't have a right subtree. So we can just return the previous pointer, which is gonna be null. Um, if we're traversing the left subtree, if there is a left subtree, then what we have to do is we're gonna use the previous pointer, right? So you can see the answer is basically 13, right? And let's say we have a situation where, where in this case, P is four, right? So if P is four, uh, which, which is pretty simple, we just compare, in this case, current is seven, pre is null. So in this case, um, P is less than seven, right? So we're gonna search on the left side. So in this case, we have current is four, pre is basically seven, which is the previous value of current. So then we notice that we have four. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the smallest value on the left, on the right subtree, right? So in this case, uh, we're just gonna get um, current is equal to six, right? We still don't change the previous pointer because there could be a situation where this node is actually null, right? If it's null, then we wanna make sure we return the preview, right? So in this case, if it's not null, what we're gonna do is that we're going to skip current is equal to current dot right, right? Because we know that the current node's value is actually uh, bigger than or equal to the target node's value. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna search on the right side. So we're gonna get current is equal to current dot right. Okay, so we know that current node's value is actually bigger than uh, the target node's value. So we're gonna search on the left side, right? So in this case, what we're gonna do now is because we're searching on the left side again, right? Just like I mentioned, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get, we're gonna use the pre, right? We're gonna use the previous pointer. We're gonna to touch the previous pointer. So we're gonna get pre is equal to six, current is equal to five, right? So we notice that five is still bigger than four. Okay, so we're gonna to continue to search on the left side. So we get current is equal to null. And then pre is equal to no five, right? So then once we get current is equal to null, we can break out a loop and we can just return the, the previous node value, right? So you can see the code is really much more simpler. And what we're trying to do here is we're trying to do our base case check to see if root is null, if it's null, which is return null. Um, then we have our pointers, current and the prev. And if the current is does not equal to null, uh, we can just basically do our search, right? So current.val is bigger than p.val, then we can just search on the left side, right? So if we if we are searching on the left side, again, like I said, we, we need the previous pointer, right? Um, right, because in this case, there could be a situation where the right subtree is null. So in this case, we're just returning the pre. 
Um, if we're searching on the right side, we don't really need to touch the previous pointer. Uh, we can just basically search on the right side and then we will, uh, the previous pointer will not move at all, right? So we continue until we get current is equal to null. If it's null, we're just going to break out the loop and then we're just going to return pre, right? So you can see this is how we pretty much solve the problem and time complexity for this case is big O of n, where n is the number of nodes that we have in our tree. And basically for our space complexity, it's going to be constant, right? So in this case, this uh, because we're only using pointers, so the space complexity will be constant space complexity.